Okay, welcome to today's presentation on getting creative with Google Drawings. If you need a copy of today's presentation, it can be found at the following URL. What we are going to go over is um, a little bit about Google Drawings. You can use it for collaboration to create flowcharts, organization charts, website wireframes, mind maps, concept maps, and other types of diagrams. Google Drawings is a free web-based application developed by Google. You can work on it by yourself or in collaboration with others. So today's objectives is to get you to go ahead and explore the different types of Google Drawings. To create a Google Drawing, insert shapes, images, text, lines, add charts, word art, and other active links. To get into Google Drawings, please log in to your Google Chrome with your Google account and then go to your Google Drive and click on New More Google Drawings. So I have 10 plus ideals that we can go through together. So to get started, there's three ways that we're going to approach this. First is a demonstration that I'll have for myself. Second is a way for you to go ahead and make a copy and work on your own. And third is the opportunity for you to work with groups inside the same document. To get a copy of the actual presentation, to get a copy of the actual exercise, I will paste that into the chat, which should be located over on the left-hand side. The first one is magnet poetry. It's similar to refrigerator magnets. It's a great way for your students to write poetry, phrases, sentences, and stories with a limited number of word banks or little magnets. So we're going to open up this example, make a copy of it. And inside here, you can see a picture that resembles a refrigerator. So you just click and drag and move over the magnets so that you can make a poem. Now, if you would like to make your own magnets, you can go up to the corner and click on the shape option and bring in a rectangle. Then you can right click on top of the rectangle and insert or edit text. You can change the alignment of the text. And then working from left to right, you can change the color and choose the type of font and then change the size. Okay, so these are diagrams. Um, you've probably seen these hundreds and hundreds of times. But what we want to do is give the students the ability to create their own. Um, ownership of a concept means that you're invested in learning. So I'm pasting this copy in here for you to see. So I'm going into the diagram copy that I made for you guys. And um, the main reason behind this one is that I would like for you to make sure that you understand transparency. So with a Venn diagram, it's really cool when you can see the color of the other object or shape underneath. So I have these two colors, and I would like to have the green kind of show the blue underneath. So that way, when I have the Venn diagram meeting, I can see the relationship between them. So I'm going to select the object that happens to be on the very top, go up to the fill bucket, and go down to where I have custom. We have the option of doing a hue, a, and it's a tone, I think is what it's called. But down at the very bottom, you have transparency. So now I can kind of move it so I'm able to see beneath. So I'm gonna change the transparency on the object that's at the very top. Click OK. And now you can see through it to the object underneath. So now that I have this done, when I want the students to start using the actual VIN, I can have them use the text box to type in the different items. And I'm just changing the font to something different and the size. So to fix it up a little bit more, I probably would go to where I have the border color. That's right here. Choose black and change the weight so it's a little bit bigger. 
this one also black, weight also. So I am going to the next one. And this is our first group activity. Wow, I have never done this before. When I thought about it in my mind, it worked perfectly. So now we can see whether or not it will work in practice. So I'm pasting in the links. And on each of these, if you can kind of choose the one that you would like to go to, maybe it's your favorite number. What should end up happening is that all of you should be in the same one with somebody else, not by yourself. So I'm going into the very first one. And I see that people are actually populating here. Wow, it's working. That's working. So what you would do, and this is a concept that you want to share with your kids. If I want you guys to do group work, I usually assign this to you ahead of time by naming the group that you're in. But since we're using a Google tool or app, it is possible for all of you to be in the same document at the same time. So setting this up, the first thing I did is I did once again, the image search that Google has built in. So this kind of keeps your students from wandering around and wandering away from you. So I can search for tree and then pick any of these images to be the background to the actual drawing. Now the items that you see over on top happen to be shapes. So I'm going to click on the shape option. And in the shape option up at the very top is the ones that we traditionally use for diagrams, for connecting objects together. So by clicking on rounded rectangle, and then you see that you have the crosshair, I now click and drag to make the actual shape itself. Now shapes can be modified and changed by going to the fill color and the line option or border to make it look different. But in the case of the one that we have here, my purpose is to show you exactly how to connect these to each other, okay? So the power that's behind family trees or um, organizational charts, which essentially is what this is, is the fact that you can show to the viewer exactly how items are connected. So in the case of this one that's here and the one that might be next to them, I can click on the option line to click and drag and make a line that connects the two. And I can choose the actual type of line it happens to be. Okay. So going down to this one here, I can choose to go ahead and connect this to another one and change the type of line. This time it's solid, this time it's not orange, maybe it's purple, and so on. When we use this with our students, we also wanna make sure that ahead of time we talk about norms, such as it's not a practice that we wanna do, by going in and deleting what another person's done, okay? So we work together. We're not here to be destructive. We're here to be productive. So I'm going to the next option that we have here, which deals with website wireframes. And then we will probably go to flowcharts and some of the other items listed. I think we can actually finish everything in time. 